Well, it is the story, of course, everyone is talking about. Let's head outside right now and take a look at what the air quality is like at this hour here right at noon. It has been so bad, of course, lately that we've had to keep our very own meteorologist, Jeremy Legu, who loves the outside. We've had to keep him inside to give the weather report because they're just not recommending people be outside. However, Jeremy, we're, you're still indoors, but things have improved slightly. I'm just glad to see you're nice and healthy in here. Yeah, I, I love know, it. it. It's great to be inside sharing space with you, Laura, but it uh, yeah, it has been bad lately and right now I'm going, let me outside, let me outside. I want to go outside now because we've got a couple of factors at play as we head into the afternoon and that's going to make it just a little bit uh, not as nice as right now. That's what we'll say right now. Temperatures though knocking on the door of 90 degrees. We're already warming up across the inland northwest and we are going to continue to do so close to that 90 degree mark. Just about everywhere. Spokane, Coeur d'Alene and Sandpoint in the upper 80s, mid 80s in Wenatchee and 94 there in Moses Lake as temperatures continue to climb right now. How about that for you? It's been a while since I've been able to say this moderate air quality. That means we can head outside and enjoy some of what the world has to offer. Once again, though, if you're in some of those sensitive groups, you have lung disease, heart disease, asthma, something of that nature, maybe just limit time outside and don't necessarily participate in those vigorous physical activities. Unfortunately, it does look like this moderate air quality doesn't last all day. We likely trend back toward that unhealthy for sensitive groups and then we're between moderate and unhealthy as we go through the next, oh, say 24 hours or so. We got rid of some of those showers and storms in northern Washington and northern Idaho. Those have moved out and we're drying out across the region as temperatures continue to climb. I think we get up to about 97 here in town today and then cool down overnight before we do it all again tomorrow. I know Jeremy, I've, I've told the family head outside, head outside. Uh, we've got a little window right now. If you would like the very latest updates on the air quality throughout the region, text the word air to 509-448-2000. We'll send the information right to your phone. It is 1203 right now. A business that's been open almost 50 years in Spokane Valley may be closing. Nicole Hernandez went to Roller Valley to explain why the skating rink is in danger. Yeah, so back in 2017, Roller Valley here actually almost closed because the longtime owner passed away. But a company called TDR Logistics came in, they bought the building, and they realized how much support the community had for the roller rink, so they decided to keep it running. Now, though, that company is reconsidering that decision. Roller Valley has been here since 1975. It's an iconic building. But it might not be a roller rink for long. This is a permit request from the city of Spokane Valley. According to the document, the owners of the building are requesting to change Roller Valley into a storage facility. From the outside, there are already noticeable changes to the spot with a chain link fence around the property. This is new. I was probably here a month ago. It's quite shocking. That's Katherine Reynolds, enrichment director at Daybreak Youth Services. Where are the kids going to go? Reynolds says kids need safe places to funnel their energy out. With places like Savage Land and Laser Quest closed too, she's concerned. We're seeing a huge spike in mental health as well and just um, kids being deprived. And we're just beginning to see the iceberg, you know, just a little tip of the iceberg. That's where Shad Kramer comes in. One, two, three. Legacy. Local boxing gym owner who wants to buy the Roller Valley building. We would be able to expand our program in a huge way as a boxing club. Including their at-risk youth program that works with Daybreak and their program helping people with Parkinson's. It's a game changer for us as a business, it really is. And they would keep the roller rink going on the weekends. I would keep the ring in the middle and put live musicians in the ring and then let everybody skate around the ring and it'd just be the coolest. But of course, that can only happen if they make a deal with the current owners of Roller Valley, TDR Logistics. There really is no plan B property for us. Um, this is the unicorn. It has everything we need. Shad says TDR has turned down several of the gym's offers to buy the building. At the end of the day, they're a business and they do have the right to do whatever they want with the property. I did reach out to the owners and they declined comment at this point, but Shad says he will keep fighting for Roller Valley.
I have another permit request that TDR Logistics actually put into the city of Spokane Valley in 2018. You can see here on the copy, it says they're asking the city to construct four new mini storage buildings. And if you look back behind Roller Valley now, you can see that those buildings did end up coming into place. And if they continue on with their plan to make Roller Valley a storage facility as well, they will have storage facilities throughout the entire property. In Spokane Valley, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Nicole, thank you very much. It is 12.06 right now and votes are being counted for Washington's primary election. So let's take a look at the current standings as we take a look at the local elections. First, taking a look at Spokane City Council District 1, position 2. Right now, Jonathan Bingle holding on to the majority of votes with 47%. And for position 2, Zach Sapone is leading the race after the first ballot count with 43% of the vote. He is followed by Mike Lish with 29% of the vote. There were so many people in the race, we actually need two full screens to share that. Moving on to Spokane Valley City Council, current Spokane Valley Mayor Ben Wick is leading the race for position number four after the first ballot count with 60% of the vote. For position five, incumbent Pam Haley has a strong lead at 48%. And for the final race for Spokane Valley City Council, Laura Patton has a slight lead over incumbent Linda Thompson for position seven. A handful of other key elections are also up for a vote. So to find all the election results in your area, just test, text the word election to us, 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link and again, you'll have it right on your phone.